Minnie Riperton, the singer and songwriter best known for her 1975 recording of Loving You, died of cancer today in Los Angeles. She was 31. That's Minnie Riperton, a talented soul who left the world too soon. I see the happiness. I see the pain. Her demise came as an ultimate shock to many fans all over the world, as she was one star who captivated audiences with her beautiful voice. You have, I've said this many, many times before, but you have a remarkable and incredible voice. What a gift. Thank You've you. got how many octaves? Have you ever actually stood <clears throat> at the piano and tried to see how many octaves? Are you more than Ima Sumek? But despite all of that, death still came for her so early. Perhaps way too early, if what her daughter is supposedly saying is true. What many people don't know is that Minnie Ripperton left a daughter that has grown into an amazing actress, Maya Rudolph. You may know her from her roles on Saturday Night Live, as well as on series like Loot and The Good Place. Shia, I don't understand. Let me tell you something, woman. Shia, we need to get out of here! Come out! While the world still listens to Minnie's music and grieves her death, controversies have always surrounded the causes of her early demise. Now, it appears more truth will be exposed, as there are now claims that Maya Rudolph is finally confirming the rumors about her mother's death. My mom was 31 when she died, and I'm 45. Like, I'm so much older than she was, and I've, I've had so much time to really process all the information. I While Riperton became famous for her song, Lovin' You, she's now seen as one of the best singers ever. People loved her for being able to sing really high notes, even using a special technique called the whistle register. She is one of the few singers capable of hitting the highest notes, four, five octaves. She actually has a higher note than Ariana Grande, who could hit four, and is very close to Maria Carey, who could hit five, which is incredible. Most singers only use this sometimes, but Ripperton could do it a lot. This special skill makes her very special in music history. Minnie Ripperton had a unique voice. She could sing different types of music like opera, jazz, pop, rock, and R&B. She also wrote a songs. Maria Carey reported that Minnie Ripperton was a big musical inspiration for her. Minnie Julia Ripperton was born on November 8, 1947 in Chicago, Illinois. She grew up on the south side of Chicago as the youngest of eight children. Her mother was a housewife, and her father worked for the railroad as a porter, a kind of helper. Minnie always dreamed of singing and entertaining people. She would often sing for her family and friends who came to visit. Her older brother was a jazz pianist, and Minnie would play outside, singing and making up songs from a very young age. As a child, Minnie studied music, drama, and dance at Chicago's Lincoln Center, which was right across the street from where she lived. My voice teacher, Marion Jeffrey, who lives in Chicago, she told me once after a performance, she had read that I was like four and a half or five, and she told me emphatically that I am, you are five and a half octaves. She started learning modern dance when she was three years old and took ballet classes when she was five. By the time she was nine, she began singing lessons, and at 11, she started learning opera singing. She trained in opera for nine years to become a skilled opera singer, and during this time, she developed a vocal range of five octaves. I studied for nine and a half years. Wow. Did you want to be an opera singer? Yeah, I wanted to be the, the opera ballerina acting... Uh, twirling baton. As Minnie got into her teens, she began singing at church and in the church choir. She also sang at her high school. Around this time, she fell in love with R&B music. Minnie started singing background vocals at a local studio for $10. When she was around 14 years old in high school in 1963, she got her first record deal with a girl group called The Gems. She joined The Gems because Renard Minor, a blind pianist working with the group, needed another female singer after one had left. Minor discovered Minnie while searching for singers at high schools. He heard Minnie singing in her school choir and thought she sounded great, so he asked her to join The Gems. With The Gems, Minnie recorded songs like That's What They Put Erasers on Pencils For, I Can't Help Myself, and Can't Take a Hint. Although they released several songs, none became big hits. They ended up doing a lot of background vocals for Chess Records artists. Eventually, they changed their name from The Gems to The Girls 3 and later to Dot and Me. 
However soon, she left the group. Minnie made a complete change and joined the Rotary Connection, a psychedelic rock group, in 1967. By 1968, she became the lead vocalist of the group. During her time with the Rotary Connection, Minnie met songwriter and producer Richard Rudolph. They got married in 1969 and had two children, Mark and Maya Rudolph. Minnie started her solo career in 1970, initially signing with GRT Records. She began working on her debut album, Come to My Garden, with producer and arranger Charles Stepney, along with her husband, Richard Rudolph. Although the album only reached number 160 on the Billboard 200 chart, music reviewers consider it a masterpiece. Ramsey Lewis introduced Minnie as a solo performer on the night of December 26, 1970, at Chicago's legendary London House. This is where she performed many tracks from her album. Despite its lack of commercial success, Come to My Garden is highly regarded by music critics. Minnie returned to the Rotary Connection for the group's final album in 1971. After finishing with the group, she moved to Gainesville, Florida, and later relocated her family to Los Angeles, where she joined Stevie Wonder's backing group, Wonder Love. After touring with Stevie Wonder, Minnie returned to the studio to start working on her second album. Due to her excellent collaboration with Stevie Wonder, they developed a strong working relationship. In fact, Stevie decided to produce her second album. Perfect Angel was released in 1974 and was a big success, reaching number four on the Billboard 200 charts and number one on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. It sold over 500,000 copies. Some of the most notable songs from this album include Reasons, Seeing You This Way, and Lovin' You. This record made Minnie a household name, and the song Lovin' You has been featured in various films and TV shows over the years. Her third album, Adventures in Paradise, came out in 1975. It reached number 18 on the Billboard charts and number 5 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. An interesting fact about this album is that while shooting for the album cover, Minnie was attacked by a lion. Despite this, the album cover is quite striking. By 1976, she was at the peak of her career. At the 1976 American Musical Awards, she was nominated for Best Soul Artist, along with Aretha Franklin, who eventually won the award. Aretha Franklin. Gwen McRae. And Minnie Rickerton. In the same year on The Tonight Show on August 24th, Minnie disclosed that she had undergone a mastectomy because of breast cancer. However, her cancer had spread to her lymphatic system. When she was diagnosed, doctors gave her only six months to live. However, Minnie surpassed the doctor's prognosis, continuing to work despite the pain. She even served as a national spokesperson for the American Cancer Society during their 1978 and 1979 campaign. I got cancer, I lost a breast, but I saved the rest of my life. During the production of her fifth album, Minnie's cancer worsened to the point where she was experiencing extreme pain. On May 9, 1979, she released her final album while still alive. It peaked at number 29 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 5 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album included two charted singles, including Memory Lane. In the early months of 1979, Minnie experienced severe lymphedema, which left her right arm immobilized. This condition was evident whenever she appeared on television, particularly noticeable on shows such as The Mike Douglas Show. As her health declined, she found herself bedridden by May and June, eventually requiring hospitalization on July 10, 1979. Tragically, Minnie passed away on July 12, 1979, at the young age of 31, while in the comforting embrace of her husband. And Minnie Ripperton, the singer and songwriter best known for her 1975 recording of Loving You, died of cancer today in Los Angeles. She was 31. At the time of her passing, her beloved daughter Maya Rudolph, who is now an American actress and comedian, was just seven years old. Minnie could express how dear Maya was to her as towards the end of the song, Lovin' You, Riperton sings the word Maya repeatedly. She included this in her performance on the Midnight Special. Maya talks a lot about how her mom's death affected her. My life, it was so hard and I was just like, it's too much, it's too much. She says her dad, who she thinks is cute, didn't know how to do her hair after her mom died. 
She also says that when she was young, she felt embarrassed about her hair a lot because she was the only kid in her group who was mixed race. Maya said, so much of my childhood was dealing with my hair and being super embarrassed by it, mainly because I grew up being the only mixed kid. During her youth, Maya said that she felt completely lost. She said, my mom died when I was seven, so when you don't have a woman, she adds, trailing off. First of all, hair products that exist today did not exist when I was a child. The detangling system that I use now on my children is light years beyond anything that would have ever happened to me growing up in Westwood. The biracial actress often questioned whether she belonged in her community. I never felt like my black cousins. I felt loved, but I didn't feel culturally. I was the kid that lived in California who didn't grow up around the family. Be whatever you want to be, Maya recalls being told as a kid. You're beautiful. You're unique. I was like, oh, unique. There's always going to be a F name for what I am. After Minnie's passing, fans of the late singer would frequently approach Maya on the street, seeking to know why I wasn't as black as my mother, more or less. She says, I didn't seem as culturally black. It really didn't help that it was a public experience. For example, two months after Minnie's death, Maya recalls how her seventh birthday party was the subject of a Jet magazine cover story. It was weird to grow up that way, thinking, I'm the kid whose mom died and everybody knows it, or at least you feel like everybody knows it. Following Minnie Ripperton's untimely passing, numerous artists came together to contribute vocal tracks to songs that Minnie had already recorded, aiding her husband in completing her sixth album. Renowned performers like Michael Jackson, Roberta Flack, and Stevie Wonder, among others, lent their voices to this posthumous project. Minnie's final album, Love Lives Forever, was released in 1980, reaching number 35 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 11 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. At the time of Minnie's tragic passing, her soulful voice had already captured the hearts of countless fans worldwide. Upon hearing the news of her death, the entire music industry mourned her loss. Minnie Ripperton's life was cut short, robbing the world of her immense talent and the contributions she still had to offer. She was taken from us too soon, leaving behind an indelible mark with her incredibly beautiful voice. Until now, her fans continue to admire her as her legacy lives on and blesses the ears of many listeners. A user said, I'm so glad that her work of art is known as a treasure now. They really don't consider singers hit makers unless they cross over. Minnie Riperton, you could never put her in a category. Love all her music. My favorite is Come to My Garden. She definitely was an angel. Not only vocally, but her mere presence and her eyes showed such a joy and delicacy. May she rest in peace. Another user stated, I love Minnie Riperton. How sad it was when she died. I still feel sad whenever I see any clips of her and how she died so young. Minnie Riperton was a vocal and a class act. Although Minnie Ripperton was supposed to be a five-octave singer when she sang live, she could go to eight octaves. I heard her live many times. What a gifted woman. Rip Minnie Ripperton. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching.